I'm always eager to learn from other martial arts, so I asked my friend Henshi Scott Taylor, who's a fourth damn black belt in Japanese Jiu Jitsu, what are the 10 most savage submissions from Japanese Jiu Jitsu that he can teach me and of course you guys. Nice, that's really cool. <laughs> Very painful in a good way. I told him to not hold back and really put it on me, but I should have been more careful what I wish for as my wrists are pretty sore now. It turns out he really likes wrist locks and neck cranks, which are submissions that are a bit polarizing in Brazilian Jiu Jitsu. However, I don't see the need to ignore any part of the body within reason, of course. Before we start, a warning, these are pretty brutal. If you're going to use these in your training, proceed with caution and understand that you need to always keep your training partner safe, go slow and controlled, never crank submissions. Alright, before we start, quick word from the sponsor of today's video, Element. Do you experience muscle cramps when you train Jiu Jitsu? And what about after training? This is because when you sweat, you lose electrolytes, the primary one being sodium. And when sodium isn't adequately replaced, it's common to experience muscle cramps and fatigue, which is why I started drinking Element. It's a tasty electrolyte drink mix with a science-backed electrolyte ratio of sodium, potassium, and magnesium. It also contains no sugar, no coloring, no artificial ingredients, none of that junk. Element is formulated to help anyone with their electrolyte needs, and it's perfectly suited for people following a keto, low-carb, or paleo diet. I've been drinking it every Every day for several months now and I don't experience muscle cramps anymore at all, it's awesome. Right now, Element is offering my listeners a free sample pack with any order. That's 8 single serving packets free with any Element order. This is a great way to try all 8 flavors or share Element with a salty friend. Get yours at drinkelement.com slash Jordan Teaches. This deal is only available through my link. You must go to drinklmnt.com slash Jordan Teaches. This is my favorite one. <laughs> this one's from S-Mount, a common armbar position where you grip the bottom player's palm and loop your other arm underneath to connect it to their hand. Now you rotate your body for an absolutely brutal finish. <sighs> yeah. Let's do it again. I didn't even turn yet. <laughs> oh yeah, you can go further, a little further, yeah. <laughs> We have a wrist lock from Close Guard, where the top players position their grips on the inside of the bottom player's biceps, which can be very useful grip placement to set up Close Guard passes such as the knee in the butt or the Sao Paulo pass. This technique makes you pay for what otherwise would have been great grips to take. To hit this wrist lock, you trap the top player's wrist between your bicep and your forearm, and then Gable grip your hands together to connect their wrist to your chest. Now you rotate onto your side and drive your chest forward to bend their wrist inward. This is super slick and one I'm definitely going to try next time I'm in close guard. If you're not bending that, you're staying strong. Yeah, see how I can't bend this? <laughs> the dirty bag is a great option when your opponent is keeping their wrist straight and strong to prevent it from being bent. You bend the wrist by basically doing a knee strike, which is super cool, but definitely might make some people mad. This is a cool lapel choke when the bottom player is framing on you to make space. You feed the near side lapel underneath their arm as they make space, and then pass it to your cross face hand, and then take a palm down grip on the same lapel to cut off both carotid arteries with one lapel. I like using the lapel too from side control, usually the far side lapel and go over the arm to trap it, but I definitely gotta play around with this joker choke, and it's also available from close guard. Nice. Nice. Yeah. That's when you know what's good. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> nice. Good. So this is when you're getting into like hand fighting in here? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. There we go. I gotta ice my wrist after. <laughs> so that's three guys. Three. Yeah. Uh, you can go hard. Don't worry about it. <laughs> This is a really cool neck crank from Top Crucifix. I often use this position too, but use it to take backs or hit triangles. But the neck crank is right there and a great option. Nice. Oh yeah. There we go. <laughs> All you need to do is transition from a cross face to cupping the bicep and step over their arm, and then grip and twist. And if you're not into neck cranks, there's also a collar choke available. Now we have a wrist lock when your back is taken, which takes advantage of a common wrist control position called the wrist ride. As Scott explains, you want to trap their wrist before they can take a deep grip to trap yours. 
Once it's trapped, you fall to their overside and rotate your body towards them to put pressure on their wrist. Yeah, so you, when you reach in like this, you're always trying to go for this control. Yeah. So I don't want you to have that. I want to get this. Yeah. Protect. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah, that was a good one. Oh, my wrists are very sore. <laughs> A lot of people want to control this arm because they don't want around the head, right? Yeah. <laughs> All right, so let's do it again. Yeah, that's, that's awesome. Yeah. <laughs> uh, nice. Coming in here, people put up. Yeah. <laughs> nice. Here's a great example of that defense in action where they stop you from grabbing the head. And now I have a wrist lock ready for next time. So as I'm coming through, I just get here. Oh, it's out. And it's the same. Shit, my wrist is killing. <laughs> it's awesome, bro. I love you. <laughs> there are a lot of ways to break armbar defensive grips. And this one is definitely the most brutal that I've seen. If you use this one in training, make sure that you're good friends with that person. I save all the brutal stuff for my friends and I expect them to do the same to me. The heel and the neck hurts pretty bad and it's probably illegal. Main difference is uh, Japanese Jiu-Jitsu is kind of like a, a jack of all trades art and a king of nothing. So with more Japanese Jiu-Jitsu styles, they do the striking, standing joint locks, and grappling. Not so much focus on the grappling side, just the style I do is 95% grappling. Uh, so that's the main difference. Kind of like what uh, Jigoro Kano did with Judo, Haleo Gracie did with Jiu Jitsu. Took one aspect of it, made it better. As a martial artist, do you try to learn from other martial arts and incorporate that into your Japanese Jiu Jitsu, like Brazilian oh, Jiu Jitsu, for example? Absolutely. I try to learn from everybody. So, you know, like you and I are friends, I've, I've learned yeah. tons from you and, and your videos. Thank you. And, uh, you know, other friends around, uh, even karate guys uh, and the more traditional Japanese Jiu Jitsu guys, absolutely. I learn from everybody. Sambo, catch wrestling, yeah, uh, can all mix in. Yeah, I share the exact same mentality. I think that. To be a true martial artist, you should want to learn from everyone and not exclude any martial arts because it's not your martial art. There's so much out there, so many different things and things people prioritize, like certain moves or positions over others. And, you know, why just learn only your thing? Why not learn everything? So. Yeah, exactly. And this is make it work for your style the best you can. 100%. Yeah. Yeah. yeah thank you for your time. Oh, well, thanks for having me. I yeah. appreciate it. My wrists are super sore. <laughs> so, yeah, I appreciate it, man. Go easy on Thank you. <laughs> Yeah, thank you. So Scott, what's the main difference? Let me tell you. I do this every time.